Welcome to the Equest podcast. This is a special edition. Conversations with and for the Irish authorized funds industry with your host, Daniel Lawler. This episode specifically is inspired by Funds Ireland Minicon, a virtual conference taking place week commencing the 2nd of November 2020 and for the funds industry. CP86, the final chapter, transforming challenge into best practice. RSVP over at www.fundsirelandminicon.com. Danny, I wanted to take 15, 20 minutes with you tops to talk to you about Funds Ireland Minicon, your day at Minicon, where this came from, what we're up to, and what people can expect. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready as cool. well. <laughs> Um, let's start with Funds Ireland Minicon. Where would you say this uh, this project or initiative came from? Well, about two or three months ago, uh, I wrote a mock Dear CEO letter on the thematic review that the central bank was conducting on CP86. And I did that because as I was chatting with clients and contacts, it was probably the number one question that I got asked was about what do you think the outcome will be? So rather than repeat the conversation again and again, decided to do the, a mock. You took pen to paper. Yeah, and commit. Wrote a 50 page document. <laughs> well, not quite 50, but, um, but just to, to, to put some thoughts down on what I thought would be the outcome. Uh, and as we record on Monday, uh, we expect that that letter, the actual letter, the Central Bank's version will drop probably tomorrow. So this is the 19th of October, Monday, and we're expecting the letter to drop Tuesday the 20th. That's right. We know the Director General is speaking at the Irish Funds Conference on Wednesday. My expectation is that given this is such a huge issue and so topical that uh, she would like that letter to be public before she... I think that you use the word issue, huge issue. Huge issue, absolutely. I'm just, just noticing the language. Um, yeah, let, let's get to the letter uh, for sure. But I, I think it's important that we set up where FIMC came from, because you're right, the Dear CEO letter went out. So on the back of that, we got a huge response. People yep. interested to, I guess, understand or, or, or see where they think, develop their thinking around where the CB86 thematic letter is actually going to land. And then that led to further conversations about, well, if it turns out this way, and for example, there's a particular focus on substance and resourcing, what am I going to do to get myself into the best place or to get into a place where I'm meeting regulators' expectations? And then that led to, well, why don't we, why don't we kind of put together an event where people can come along and listen to the latest developments, but also insights and a little bit of analysis, but also, uh, you know, hear things that they won't have heard elsewhere to help them with that planning to get to this next stage uh, of compliance. And I think um, if we just volleyed that ball back and forth a wee bit, um, Funds Ireland Minicon, uh, as we were teasing out the CP86 experience, we recognized that that would be a really interesting template with which to use for other, um, I'm not gonna use the word issues, but topics, and situations in the funds industry from time to time that warrant a collective of experts and critical thinkers to come together and, as you say, analysis and share and provide insights. Um, so CP86 is the first um, event. It's a That's show, right. it's a virtual <clears throat> experience, a virtual show, live Q&A um, that sits under the Funds Ireland Minicon banner. Yeah. CB86 is the first show. I guess it makes sense when you, you think about timing and, and what's hot in terms of topics in the market at the moment. Looking into next year, there's quite a few other issues. I guess as, a, as an industry, it is one that's constantly evolving, constantly being driven by new regulations and rules and the regulators focus shifting from things like ESG to fees and expenses to liquidity management. So we have a number of, of uh, topics that we're going to cover next year as well using this Funds Ireland Minicon format, the virtual conference, to bring, to bring, bring people together, but particularly bring leaders and insights together to help people on their path. 
And it's um, it's been fun. I mean, it's our first one, and uh, I have a lot of respect for the process of going from zero to one. It's very very different uh, than going from one to ten. So um, we're learning a lot. We've got some great partners. We're having a lot of fun. We're working a lot harder than we thought we would with this particular event. Um, but I think that's all part and process of the journey of going from zero to one with something like this. Yeah, um, and also, sorry, I'm going to call you there, but also I think it's to try and deliver something like this, but in a way that's different than how others deliver this, to uh, really uh, engaging I, and punchy. I would say there's an opportunity to evolve and innovate what has been done for the last 10 plus years. Um, and, and I think most professionals would be of the mindset that innovation is a very healthy thing. But I think there's something quite scary um, about being the first one to try and do something different when you know that the first go of it's going to be a bit bumpy and not really perfect and a little bit wobbly. Because um, it's not until you get to the second, third and fourth iteration of that, that it really flows. So, um, Shannon, you sound like a golfer on the first tee who's making their excuses before they, they top it down the dry, down the fairway. Oh, but it's also just a, a law of any innovation. If you're yeah, proud yeah. of your first launch, then you waited too long to launch it. It's not a famous uh, saying from one of our tech giants. Um, it, it's just reality. Yeah, it, this will, Minicon 1 on CB86 will be different than what people have experienced before at virtual events. And I'm going to say it's going to be better. It's going but to be if we talk about the better. differences, I mean, there's no talking over PowerPoint slides. I mean, that is uh, something that we both agreed on months ago. So everyone who's coming to the event is, well, actually that's, yeah, no, you're right. It is different because um, we've forbidden the use of the word sponsor. We don't want sponsors slapping logos on events and, and nothing more. We've invited partners to co-create. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, whilst co-creation is really amazing, everybody has a different opinion. And I think one of the things we've been throwing back and forth is do we uh, record it, pre-record it, or do we do it live? And there's really great arguments for both cases. Um, what else have we talked about? Oh, the time slots. Should it just be two hours a day? So when we've opened up the, the agenda and the process to the partners, we've had a lot of really great feedback. Uh, we've been challenged to do better. Uh, we've been able to challenge them to do better. And whilst it's not been, oh, here's some canned content from six months ago that'll do the job. It's definitely not been that easy. It's, it's been an experience that I think will produce an outcome that's interesting and engaging for the audience. Absolutely. You'll see. Time will tell. <laughs> I will tell. The, the way that it'll be delivered, the, the punchy, you know, in terms of how we've structured the sessions to make them shorter. 15 punchy, minutes. Yeah. Will be, will be different. But also what we're really pushing each other to do is to come with content that is uh, new and fresh and, and not something you'll have Googled and not something you'll have heard somewhere before. Uh, it's going to be very, very current because, as I said, we'll be doing it hot in the heels of the dear CEO letter having dropped. Um, and it'll be, you know, I said that the, the, the emphasis and the onus is there to, to come up with something that people won't have heard before. So we're, and then it's quality. I think we're, high. we want quality content, which means taking um, the information that we know to be true and challenging our perspective on that particular set of information so that we can present it without bias, so that we can present it. For example, I, I'm aware of one of the sessions where um, they're presenting the drawbacks and benefits of all the different options available so that the firm can choose which set of drawbacks and benefits that they're prepared to live with, as opposed to here's the best solution for you, do it our way. So I, I really like that shift in perspective. So the content's the same, but we're presenting a 360 degree perspective of all viable options, even the ones that we don't agree with, so that the audience can make their own choices. Absolutely, and I, I know, uh, you know, Minicon two and three and four will be progressively better, but I have high hopes for Minicon one. I think it's gonna be- I do too, I mean- It's gonna be insightful. I, I haven't worked this hard 
<laughs> in the last seven years. <laughs> but um, it, it's nice. It's nice for a change. Because, uh, of course, this is on top of the day job. So <laughs> that's always fun. But no, I have high hopes for it as well. We've got a great team behind us supporting us. And the partners are wonderful. Oh, my goodness. I get responses to emails within three minutes at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it's so wonderful uh, and helpful. You know who you are. Um, Danny, talk to me about day five, because this is a five-day event. But technically, it's not a five-day event. It's really just 10 hours spread over five days. Yeah, that's um, it. Two hours a day over five days, over the week, first week of November. And, and talk a little bit about why we did it that way. Well, there's a couple of reasons for it. As you kind of sit back and think, well, what are the topics that I think merit a bit of discussion and detail? Um, when you want to understand where mancos are at and project where they're going to go, it kind of fitted down into five different topics. Um, and so rather than try and cram it all into one day and, and taking a full day off the day off the desk is pretty tough. Uh, it's a big ask. So I think it's, it's easier to do that if it's split across a number of days rather than to do it all in one chunk. Uh, it allows people to otherwise get on with their day and to, to dip And it's in. virtual. Amazon. And I think um, I'm doing a Jungian psychology course right now. And on Sundays, it's eight hours in a Zoom call. It's eight hours. Is, is um, your head not melted? I actually am struggling to continue doing the program. I find eight hours sat a Zoom call is not necessarily an effective way for me to consume and learn and retain information. Um, and I I'm, think I'm getting a little bit resentful. Uh, of the eight hour block of continuous content um, in a Zoom room with 26 other people, but there's no interaction. It's, it's uh, you know, um, the professor is presenting information. And yeah, and, and I guess that is one reason that inspired me to never do that to an audience. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really struggling with that. But I think if I were able to take the online course in two hour blocks, three hours is too much as well when you're just sat there listening. So we went with two hours a day over five consecutive days, each two hour block representing a particular theme. And then within that two hours, instead of you know, one person talking at us, we divided that two hours up into a series of 15 minute presentations, pre-recorded or live, we'll We'll, we'll kind of rock up on the day and figure that out. Um, but live Q&A right off the back of it, regardless of how that 15 minutes is presented. Um, so that we could make this as enjoyable as possible while still consuming really high grade content. With a free goodie bag and free prizes. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you brought that up because I totally forgot about it and I love it. Oh, Danny, I'm so excited about that. So yes, Funds Ireland Minicon is proud to support small business. Very proud to support small business. Um, so can I talk a little bit about that? <laughs> uh, can I stop you? It's so great. So um, I have a marketing background. And one of the things that I'm acutely aware of is how challenging and difficult it is for a small business with really great products and services to be seen, to be engaged, to be trusted. And Funds Island Minicon and the partners have been so great. Owen, Owen Motherway over at AMX, wonderful. I know he's gonna be in your day five uh, doing a 15 minute session with you and we're gonna to get to that in a moment. But I really appreciated how um, enthusiastic the partners have been about this. So. I wanted to recognize all the participants coming to the Minicon. And some of them are coming every day for five days. Um, and instead of saying thank you, I thought it'd be really cool if we showed our thanks and appreciation. And then I thought, well, wow, what if some small businesses could benefit from this as well? And so it would be easy enough for FIMC 2020 to invite some very cool small businesses who are digging in right now, let's be honest, this is an interesting time, to not pay to be part of FIMC in any way, but put something really valuable in the digital goodie bag for a funds professional, and it has to be hyper relevant, we don't let them in the bag, um, 
which is a really great way to um, raise their brand profile, their brand awareness, introduce them to people who otherwise probably wouldn't have heard of them before. Um, Marchin's Monkeys is in the digital goodie bag as part of our well-being category. Now he is Dublin based only, but ProFit, sorry, Fit uh, Vision, beg your pardon, are also in the digital goodie bag for corporate wellness uh, opportunities and packages. We've got uh, Becky Wright. She's a virtual photographer. She does virtual photo shoots. So there'll be some corporate headshots in that digital goodie bag, personal branding packages through her virtual, virtual photography. How innovative and cool is that? Um, but these are the type of small businesses that are jumping into this digital goodie bag. And Danny, you've been very good at putting some cool things in the bag as well. Thank you, Equest. Well, we got to look after the firms too. I know it's kind of, there, there's things there for the firms, there's things there for the personal and the professional, the, the, the individual in a professional capacity, and then the individual in a personal capacity. Yeah, the digital goodie bag has three categories. One is your well being, the second one is your personal brand and your career development. And then the third one is for the firm itself. And a quest, I think you put in some really, did you not put in a free use its eligibility assets masterclass, completely a, free? A free uh, use its eligible assets masterclass. There's a template there from our-, our Template, I think it's a director's packages. letter of appointment. It's totally free, is it not? Uh, absolutely, I think, I think you talked me into it, Sean. <laughs> Well, I just thought, what a wonderful way to acknowledge the people coming to our event. What a really great way to acknowledge our partners, to maximize the interaction and the conversations that they get to have during Minicon. Um, and what a wonderful way to support small business who otherwise wouldn't be able to show up in front of this type of community. And so with a win that big for all parties involved, I am very excited. And I think this will be the backbone of uh, all future mini cons throughout 2021. At least if I'm involved, they will be. And there's one for everyone in the audience. One for everyone in the audience. Oh, and we have prizes on the day. So very quickly and then we'll get to day five. So um, some of the small businesses were really excited about being part of it, but I realized that if we put them in the digital goodie bag and a thousand people, for example, said, you know, that's interesting, I'd like to do that, that we would cripple these small businesses. Uh, just with redemption and fulfillment. So as an alternative for some small businesses and to respect their administration of this offer, we have in instead invited them to donate one to five sexy prizes, totally free, um, that we can give away during the Q&A session at Minicon. So New Work Junction is a, sorry, a co-working space they have five or six offices all over ireland some of them with showers and bicycles and all sorts of cool things um they're putting a free vip pass into the prize bucket where you get 30 days free working at their any one of their um co-working places across ireland so you could use the one in dublin wicklow kilkenny is it wicklow or wexford i think it's wexford i think they one in carlo as well Carlo. Yeah, so those are really cool. And, and New Work Junction is a great outfit run by Tom Lara. I think he's wonderful. Um, definitely invested uh, in the community and wanting to support uh, the communities that he's operating in. So, you know, we've got really cool things like that. Savvy Recruitment is showing up uh, in the prize bucket. Um, I think you're, are you going into the prize bucket, Danny? I think we are going to uh, offer a free preparatory interview as a product. Ooh, a mock interview with the Central a Bank. A mock Department. interview, yeah. So you win that and we get to come around and beat the hell out of you before you that's, go um, that, the regulator so that's, and have them beat the hell out of you. That's good fun. Really great. Not but, good fun. Uh, it's not good fun you on the other side of it. It's good fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I um, Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, we're going to try and bring some entertainment into this. That scares me a little bit because it's new to me. I've never done something like that in a virtual conference before, but I'm prepared to get it wrong if it means that we've got something cool to take into 2021. So I'm looking at that as well. There's lots happening. Um, no doubt we will have some great feedback on how to do it better next year. I totally expect that as well. Um, but we're giving it our best with what we have right now. And, and that's, really, that's really all we can do and commit to at the moment. 
Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be excellent. It'll be good. That's good fun to do, albeit as you said, uh, plenty of work too. Uh, so before we get on to talk about session five, I I guess there there are still spaces available to register for Funds Ireland MiniCon. Oh, absolutely. That's the message. Uh, it's a, because it's virtual. I wouldn't even say there are limited spaces. If we max out at a thousand, then we have to upgrade the technology that we're using. Um, but that would be a nice problem to have. It's free. Um, there was a, uh, a little bit of a misunderstanding on the reg form back in the day, but we've corrected that now. It's totally free. It's not a paid for event. Um, and there's lots of room. If you work with and for the funds industry, you, you definitely want to be at this event. Absolutely. So let's talk about session five. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you're on the 6th of November. You are the final theme of five themes. You've got your two hour block mapped out beautifully and some very cool people rocking up to do these sessions with you. It's the Leaders Lounge. Yes, the Leaders Lounge. Leaders Lounge on Friday the 6th of November, 2 p.m. Irish, 9 a.m. Eastern. So we do, we have four topics that we want to cover and putting this session together was, was really interesting for me because I reached out to a number of contacts that I have in, in industry and sort of said, well, what is, it that, what is it that you'd really like to see covered that you'd find to be valuable content? And for the most part, it, it tallied quite nicely with my own experience of interacting with people in leadership positions, whether they're directors or chairpersons or CEOs. Uh, the, sa the, kind of, the same themes do uh, recur. So our first session is on the organizational effectiveness role. have been with us now for a couple of years, but there's still quite a a lot of uncertainty about what the best practices are, what's expected of you and what's not expected of you. So I'm going to spend some time with Fiona Mulcahy uh, and we're going to look at that. Um, I thought there was also a bit of uh, banter going on about should we um, look at the drawbacks and benefits of dissolving the OE role? Should we look at the drawbacks and benefits of keeping it? Wasn't there some exchange going on about that? Well, I did a blog on, on why I think it's probably time to ditch the OE role. So I, I would not be surprised if that makes its way into the conversation. Also, at that time, we'll have this Dear CEO letter from the Central Bank, which we anticipate will probably have some further guidance on the OE role and maybe put a marker down for what the regulator thinks should happen to it. So uh, always useful to kind of crystal ball gaze and let's, you know, sometimes the new new requirements are good and sometimes they have drawbacks and usually they have a bit of both so we'll, we'll take a look at all of that but particularly focusing on the practicalities of uh, what it is that the good OE roles do what it is that they don't do so that everybody who's in those positions or everybody who's supporting people in those positions uh, can be more effective cool cool i'm looking at um your session with shane Yes, so another question, again, very relevant for the directors that, that often comes up, is around directors' time commitments. Um, the regulator, in fairness, has flagged where their expectations are, but there's always a little bit of... Ambiguity? Yeah, there is a bit, and there's a bit of chat in the background. I've heard this, and I've heard that, and I think it, you know, so it's useful to kind of sift through some of the noise and say, this is actually what happens. This is actually what's happening in practice. Uh, if you are in this position, expect your life is going to be harder. If you're in a different position, well, your life's probably going to be a bit easier when it comes to things like uh, getting clearance from the central bank. And this is actually what the regulator expects in terms of time commitments. This is how you're to spend your time. So as I said, it's another of those issues that comes up quite frequently. And because there is this kind of ambiguity around it, uh, it's good to just step back and see if we can't decipher some of that and be clear about what is expected and what's happening in practice. And tell me about your session with Pete. Pete Townsend and I are going to be chatting about cybersecurity. And in particular, we're going to talk about the, the questions that the best performing directors ask when it comes to cybersecurity. So I'm, I'm very conscious, again, it's a topic that comes up all the time, and it's a standing agenda item for all regulated firms now pushed by the, the central bank. Uh, and for the most part, our, although we have a very experienced and expert director community here. They tend to come from legal and administrator type backgrounds, increasingly risk and portfolio management, but not from cyber. So you have your cyber experts rocking into your board meeting with all of their knowledge and expertise, and you have a board that is to interrogate and challenge and ask, yet they don't have 
necessarily a cyber background. So I was interested in how how directors without a cyber background can approach those conversations to get the most out of them, and do the best they can both for their own role, but, but particularly for the for the firm and, and the investors that that firm services. And talk to me about this wellness in the workplace being profitable. You've got Mark O'Reilly from Fit Vision, one of our small businesses, which makes me very happy. And you've got the very cool Owen Motherway from AMX. What's that session about and what inspired it? So that's our final session on wellness and well-being. And I guess to wrap up the wrap up the entire minicon, um, you know, we're at a point now where we're kind of six or seven months into more or less all working from home. And it's easy for the edges to get a bit frayed and for the glue to start to fall apart on teams. And as leaders, it's important to not assume that everything is the same or not assume that everything is fine because we see each other on Zoom calls every day or, or every couple of days, but actually to step back and think, what do I actively need to do to make sure that uh, although we are not working together in an office, that we're supporting each other, that we know and understand and that we're pulling in the same direction that there's some element of team spirit uh, and that we're not, we're not all falling apart. Um, and Owen had a really, has a really cool case study for work that that yeah, done. so I read that article too. That yeah, he did. it's cool. He did a LinkedIn um, post on it. I saw, uh, I was scanning some of the media over the weekend, and there was an article by the Irish Times about the tsunami of mental health issues that are hitting Ireland and other countries for that matter more now than ever in our history before. So I think this is a really important topic. Uh, it's definitely in the media, in the news, and I think we can all kind of nod our heads sheepishly going, yeah, it's, it's been tough. These last six months have been tough. It's tough and we're, we're probably facing into more of the same. And <laughs> it's easy to kind of dismiss it as being, you know, fluffy or something that's not uh, that important. It's just a fad at the moment, but actually there's more to it than that. Oh, there, yeah, so much and, more. And time. I think that... By using uh, Owen's case study, it brings it to real life rather than talking about it in the abstract. It gives firms ideas for, for why it actually is important and what the benefits are and how you go about doing something. Like it. It doesn't have to say. I like that you. Um, I like that you have Mark uh, at the session. I think Fit Vision are doing some very cool things in corporate wellness, particularly in the financial services space. They've got some very interesting um, tier one, tier two clients there, where they can talk about. Um, profitability, productivity, and some of the practical um, things that we can do in our day-to-day -to, -day to facilitate and enable our team, our colleagues, our peers, you know, to have a, I don't know if the word's more healthy, but a, a more congruent, more balanced, more stable experience in the workplace. And I think and it's- I'm really looking forward to it. It's that element of the practicality that I'm especially interested in. I'm no wellness expert, but I'm interested in the, the actual learnings that everybody can take away, myself and everybody else take away and, and put into practice and say, okay, I learned something from Minicon that day and here's something we're yes. going to do. I'm going to get on to, I'm going to commence this initiative or I'm going to throw it out there as something that we should do um, so that you feel for your all your five days that you've spent at Minicon or your one day or however you dip in and out, that you're, you're walking away with practical. I think that um, that makes me want to change up the live Q&A a wee bit so that the prizes go out to the people in the audience who have the best practical takeaway from that session. Because I do remember two months ago when you and I were spitballing Fanzarla Minicon, something that you and I were both absolutely clear on was we did not want to have an event where people left and went, sure, I, I didn't learn anything new. I knew all of that before. Um, so that could be a really interesting thing. I'll take away and add that to my to-do list. Uh, Danny, that's all the time we have for today. Is there any final comments before we wrap up? The last thing to say, of course, is you can register if you haven't done so already via the website, fundsirelandminicon.com, fundsirelandminicon.com. Hit the RSVP button, fill in the little form, hit send, and you are in. You get your hands in the goodie bag. You get access to whichever the sessions you fancy. Come along, you might win surprises, you might learn something, uh, but it's definitely going to be different. It's different. One other place, who could have thought? Who could have thought? Danny, thank you so much.
Enjoy the rest of your day. I know you're recording this afternoon, aren't you? So I'm going to let you get back to your schedule. That's all for now. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for listening to the Quest podcast. We'll catch you next time. Hello, podcast listeners, and welcome to the Equest podcast with me, Danny Lawler. If you're new to our podcast, do hit the subscribe button on whatever your preferred podcast provider is so that you're kept up to date as and when new episodes of the Equest podcast drop. For this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Shannon Eastman of Teacher Brand to Fish. Shannon and I are closely working together, collaborating on the creation of the Funds Ireland Minicon. So in this podcast, we chat a lot about the background to Funds Ireland Minicon, why we're doing it, what we're trying to achieve with it, some of the challenges about doing uh, Funds Ireland Minicon and making it a virtual event that's different from anything you'll have experienced before. Talk a little bit about the goodie bag, what's in there, and, and how we're supporting some of the local businesses that uh, just need a little bit of a, a little bit of TLC at difficult times like this when uh, the world is a bit out of kilter. We even have time to chat about the session that I'm hosting on uh, day five of Funds Ireland Minicon, which is Friday the 6th of November. For that, I'm going to be chatting about the organizational effectiveness role with Fiona Mulcahy. We're talking director's time commitments with Shane Coveney of Jimmy Eustace. We talk about cybersecurity and the, the questions that the good directors ask. That's with Pete Townsend. And finally, we have a session on well-being with a case study with Owen Motherway from AMX and also some insight on the practical things that firms can do when it comes to making sure we're all mentally well and don't fall apart. And that's with Mark O'Reilly. So sit back, relax, enjoy. If you haven't already registered for Funds Ireland Minicon, then get on with it, guys. It's coming around pretty quickly. Check out fundsirelandminicon.com. Hit the RSVP button, fill out the form, and you're in. Get your hands on the mini uh, conference access. And also, of course, the wonderful goodie bag that comes with it. Right, that's it for me. Let's get on with the show. You've been listening to the Equest podcast, a special edition. Conversations inspired by Funds Ireland Minicon. RSVP at www.fundsirelandminicon.com. For more information about Equest or Daniel Lawler, visit www.equest.ie.